ladies and gentlemen, namaskar. Welcome to the 13th edition of the Z Jaipur Literature Festival in association with Nexa at Charbag. We are delighted to introduce session 105, The Shadi Story, behind the scenes of the big fat Indian wedding. Please join me in welcoming the woman of the hour, Amita Nigam Sahai, social entrepreneur and gender activist, director and founder of three NGOs, and eminent author, Devapriya Roy. Let's welcome them on stage with a huge round of applause. Hi. So, so great to see such a lovely audience. Full house, Amita. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll we're playing it a little by ear. We'll do the launch once uh, Mr. Amitabh Kant and Madhur Jafri have joined us. We'll start talking about the book in the interim, right? If I just say the words, the four words, the great Indian wedding, I know all of you immediately have these images in your head, right? So Amita has gone and actually written a book about the great Indian wedding. It's called The Shadi Story. And it's, it's brilliant because not only is it, does it have all the, all the fun stuff about the weddings, about the whole wedding industry, but it's also rooted deeply in research. Amita, you're a sociologist, right? So um, without ado, let me get the author to start answering some questions about the book. Um, hi, everyone. It's such a delight to be here. And I cannot thank uh, the audience enough to have found time and also woven their way through these huge crowds to be here, and also to the organizers and Sanjoy and Nomita. It's just wonderful to be here. Over to you, Devapriya. Uh, Amita, you share in the preface of the book that the reason why you wrote the Shadi story is that there's a memory of a specific memory of your aunt's wedding that's stuck in your head. And you stayed with it for, for, for decades, perhaps, before you got around to writing this book. Do you want to tell us about that? So yes, this is rooted in a childhood memory. And interestingly, in a way, it became a kind of an impulse to see the wedding uh, through very different lenses beyond you know, the band Baja Bharat and all of that is you know, associated with the wedding the sartorial sense, the good clothes, the happiness, the celebration. But also, it has also made me very sensitive to the idea of ladki wala, ladke wala. It's almost as if the ladke wala is powdered in 24 karat gold, and the ladki wala is always, you know, the obsequies, khatir trying dari, to please, trying to please all the time. So coming back to this childhood memory that Devapriya is uh, referring to, which is there in the book, this was my aunt's wedding, my Mossi's wedding to be precise, in a small town of Uttar Pradesh, Jhansi, which is also my mother's natal home. And this is sometime in the 70s. And as a six, seven year old, I remember there was this whole barat which had entered and there was this huge celebration, drums and you know the shehnai playing in the background. And the dinner was served after a while. And you could hear the mantras being chanted, the Feras taking place, and suddenly everything sort of stopped. There was this pin drop silence. And all you could hear was this man who was screaming away, frothing at the mouth. He felt he had been insulted. And you could make out that he was from the Bharat. He had this marigold uh, garland around his neck. And he had thrown the plate because somebody had thrown some water inadvertently into his plate. And he said, I'm not going to be insulted. I am walking away from here. And the mantra stopped, the Feras stopped. Everything came to a standstill. And then my grandfather, he came and took his pagri and put it on the man's feet. And that was the saving grace. Now pagri and putting it on somebody's feet has huge connotations, which means you know, the person is putting his izzat, his sense of pride, his honor at your feet, salvage him, save him, go Don't on go with away. the wedding. Yeah. Let the wedding happen. So that right. stayed inscribed in my mind. And somewhere that became a catalyst for this opening lines of this book. Right. And so in this book, Amita has gone on to examine 
the Indian wedding from many different angles, right? So, uh, because, you know, the Indian wedding has many different avatars, right? As we say in India that the water and the boli, it changes every few course, right? Every few kilometers, it changes it, its nuances. Weddings are like that, right? Little rituals differ. But across India in the sort of the, the Hindu wedding, the seven steps around the fire is sort of a, a central motif, right? So in keeping with that, Amita has divided the book into seven segments, examining seven key ideas. So what I want to ask you next is that you were trained as a sociologist, right? You've brought a lot of research into the book. So do you want to walk us through your research methods? That how did you establish the different um, ideas? Um, that's an interesting question, Devapriya. Uh, the thing is, you know, I work in the gender space. And uh, we have worked on uh, women, work, women's health issues, the girl child, the gender equation across the world, and of course, very much, you know, the focus which is India. Uh, that always entails a lot of research. And when I was writing about the wedding, you know, the glamour, of course, is an intrinsic part of it. It's such a wonderful part. And, and the celebration, every Indian in their minds, you know, has strong associations with the wedding, with the marriage. Uh, this is something that I've actually mentioned uh, as an observation, that from the time a child is born, the family, the parents, you know, they, they talk about the marriage as if, you know, this is almost a given. And I think there are very few places in the world where the mother actually starts collecting the trousseau from the time a child is born, a daughter is born. So something which is so obsessively a part of our whole uh, psyche, psyche is something which also remains with us. And from there on, I wanted to build up the other aspects because, you know, this is something we are aware of. But what are the other connotations of the wedding? You know, the Bollywood connection, how Hindi films have such a symbiotic relationship with the Indian wedding. Um, also, let me not take it away. The devil is in the dowry, which is the name of, of the course. chapter. How Absolutely. can we take away our uh, you know, focus from there? And, and also, you also examine issues of caste and, and, and how the internet has changed. So we'll come to all of that. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll pause for a moment to invite on stage Madhur Jafri, one and only, uh, who's going to launch the book really today. And uh, of course, Madhur Jafri is one of those people who really doesn't need any introduction. Uh, an award-winning actress, she's the author of many memorable cookbooks and, and, and a memorable memoir too. And what I'd like to say is that her cookbooks are often part of wedding uh, presents, right? I got her cookbook at my wedding too. We have Mr. Kant here as well, and uh, Amitabh Kant, of course, as everyone knows, is the CEO of Niti Aayog and uh, an author. His book, Branding India, is, is very brilliant. So now, uh, now that everyone's here, maybe we should uh, formally launch the book. Well, I haven't had a chance to read the book, but I'm all for shadis, <laughs> and I would happily launch this book and hope it has the greatest success possible. Thank you. Thank you uh, well, I'm truly delighted uh, to be here because Indian weddings are not just big, fat, beautiful, but they are truly beautiful in many, many ways. And, uh, you know, they represent just about everything I've done in life, the incredible India. They truly represent the spirit of being in incredible. They, in many, many ways, represent the spirit of Atiti Devo Bhava. And they represent the spirit of making India all together. So I think uh, they're a great multiplier impact on Indian economy. 
in many ways. And I think they're really, truly beautiful. Uh, so congratulations to the author for this wonderful uh, work. It's an outstanding book. All of you will pick it up. Uh, we truly love it. And anyone who has a wedding in the family, just replicate the book for the wedding. <laughs> continue to chat about the book. Uh, Amita, do you want to read a little bit before we go on ahead? I'm going to pick up one of the chapters which a lot of people may identify with. It's called Weddings and the Kiss of Money. The big fire Indian wedding has of late become a collective adjective for an increasingly elaborate event Fat on moolah, magnificent in scale and meticulously insulated from a world, beleaguered by the tyranny of cutbacks and shrinking economies. A wedding these days is a fantasy of romance and the good life and the world that one's family, friends and acquaintances is invited to witness a movie-like production of the celebrations. For the young woman or man ready to take the big step, it is a watershed event, marking the crossover from student life to the adult world. For parents, it is another major milestone in their life's journey from their own youth to now getting their child married. And I'm now going to talk about the economics. India's economic boom has transformed weddings into statement shows that celebrate the potent mix of love and money. And into this trove of wealth and good times arrived the NRIs, propelled by nostalgia, Bollywood, and a weakening rupee. And now we come to 2009, well, 19 and now early 20. Cut to 2019-20. And the excessive quotient reaches stratospheric heights. The Ambani weddings are the new gold standard for being the most extravagant and opulent of them all. Mukesh Ambani, Asia's richest man and amongst the top 20 wealthiest people in the world threw two splashy weddings for his children, Isha and Akash within months of each other. Social media braced itself to the task, sending carefully scripted vignettes of the event to millions of smartphones. From a 300,000, a 3 lakh wedding invitation to prenuptial events where their mother, Neeta Ambani, looking like a Bollywood diva, was dancing on lavish sets. The excessive fairy tale was played and replayed on people's phones. The first of these weddings, the fantastical world conjured by the Ambani's and Piramas, was attended by the first families of Bollywood, like the Bachans, the Khans, Parukune, Ranveer Singh, Rajni Khan, so on and so forth. This was, but through all the peripheral optics, the grapevine remained firmly centered around speculating what was the actual cost of the wedding? Was it a hundred crores or was it a hundred million dollars? And that was what summed it up. And I want to come to the epilogue, which actually after all of the chapters sort of, you know, strikes a kind of a, a thoughtful note. And let me just bring it here. This book begins with a childhood memory which remained festering in some visceral part of my emotional space. In time, it grew and became the starting point to more observations, a more critical understanding of the unfolding of our most fascinating and celebrated event, the wedding. The book chronicles a changing reality. We are talking about India 2020. With a note of hope 
as it explores the churning of a social process. The questioning has begun. And I'm here talking about the big fat wedding, I'm talking about dowry, I'm talking about the um, Narkewala, Larkiwala syndrome, so all of that. So the changing processes have begun. We find fresh discourses in social media, academia, legal circles, the arts, the government, the television and entertainment, in areas inhabited by the youth where individuals both women and men are raising their voices, asking questions, demanding changes that would make for a better world, a more equitable world, a diminished patriarchy. The backlash happens, yet there's hope because people are questioning, people are changing, people are actually now celebrating wedding for what it is. Love, caring, companionship. Thank you. Amita, one of the interesting things I... Uh, uh, pieces of evidence I found in your book is that by 2022, you say, half the singles in this country will be looking for their match online, right? Now, uh, we think of the internet as a brave new world, but even that has come into a little bit of question now, right? Uh, however, if one thought that with people going online, uh, issues like caste, issues like class, one would go beyond them, right? But from what I find, that even in the internet, people have found a way to codify their prejudices, and so there are uh, matchmaking sites for the super rich, there are caste-based matchmaking sites. So w what did you find out in your research? Are things changing, or are they remaining the same? Uh, that's, again, a very interesting question, Devapriya. Um, as we... I think you know, this is a very t uh, much touted line, a trite line, that India lives in several centuries, uh, several social spaces, several cultural spaces. So while uh, you, know, you have such strict norms and parameters of caste and community being followed in certain communities, there's also the youth which is now trying to find the partners online. And interestingly, you know, like shadi.com and bhartimatrimony.com, and you, know, you have a whole lot of these sites, where they actually give you these drop-down menus where you can actually figure out, okay, this is my community, this is my cause, this is my social background, this is the education. So match, 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 tick, 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 tick. Everything should come together exactly like, you know, your Pandit from uh, 18th century would have done. So that also is equally true as the new parameters where you find somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, compatible with you on various other things like education and, uh, you know, the same need for companionship. Uh, so all of these things are coexisting. And right. this is the remarkable right. resurgence in India that the youths are actually finding the voices right. so, so much I, more vocally. And I believe that Esther Duflo and Abhijit Banerjee conducted a study where they uh, showed that 30% uh, of people who start out by wanting to uh, marry within certain parameters, however, don't, do not. Right? So, uh, so there is hope, right? Yes, absolutely. There is hope. Uh, there's something, uh, before we open it up to the audience, one uh, little thing that really struck me about the book, which uh, Amita has found out about, that there's a little hamlet in Goa called Samantwadi, which is a, a haven for those who have eloped, right? And that was fascinating to me. Tell us a little about it. Uh, I love the way you've taken out this vigilance from the book and, you know, we're going to be it talking about that. It reminded me of that. Pride and Prejudice and Lydia and Wickham uh, running Absol away to Brighton. Brighton was the haven for... Absolutely. You know, <laughs> that's a right parallel. So, you know, the Seventh Wadi is this place near Goa where they have actually made it a huge profession about coming to the rescue, shall I say, of couples on the run. In the sense, you know, that... Uh, you know, this is very something which is very interesting and uh, central to what is happening with the runaway weddings is that uh, the police are chasing you, right? And the parents so often, you know, also lodge this FIR, which is a first information report, and they say, oh, the man has run away with my daughter. Abduction. He's abducted her. Uh, well, yes, abducted. That's a good word. And therefore, to escape, you know, the, um, the, 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 the persecution or, you know, whatever that can come out of it, which is not going to be very pleasant, many of them actually find a way into this place in near Goa 
And there is this whole industry which actually conducts the wedding. There's this pandit who will immediately take you, put this vermilion in your forehead, take those photographs, get the invitation card printed. And right over there, you actually have the elements which are necessary for you to have your wedding registered. And immediately, right? Because usually in the rest of the country, before you register a wedding, uh, one month ago, you have to uh, uh, sort of file, uh, uh, fill in various forms in triplicate. No, that is actually for the Special Registration, uh, uh, Marriage Registration Act. But you know, if you have kind of an Arya, uh, Arya Samaji wedding, where you have the proof of having ah, got married, okay. then you know, there are less questions and you know the whole thing is expedited. Right. So right. <laughs> that, that's the process. So Samantwadi is such a beautiful place. I think I'm going to go visit there. <laughs> <laughs> and those and who don't know can actually find the way Maybe there. convince my husband that we should do a second runaway wedding, right? Uh, on that note, I think I, I want to uh, invite Manjusha to, to uh, moderate the Q&A because I have to run away. Not, it's not a runaway wedding. It's a runaway lit fest, okay? So uh, please uh, excuse me, but I hope you have lots of questions. Manjusha, do you have a mic to write? At this point, I would also like to say a very big thank you to Amitabh Kant, who has actually taken time from another session to be here. But that is what Jaipur Lit Fest is all about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Manjusha, would you like to speak? Hi, I'm Manjusha. And we're going to take questions from the audience. So if you put your hands up and we'll do one question at a time. Hello. See, I've yet to re read the book, so I don't know what the uh, whole idea is about. I just want to ask you whether you are in favor of a traditional marriage, which is lavish, or a simple marriage, which is in court. Like, I, what is the book about? You know, um, I feel that, you know, marriages won't have to be gauged in the sense of, you know, uh, lavish or simple. The central message of what marriage is all about is uh, what has to be celebrated. And how we choose to do it is, of course, one aspect. But, uh, you know, one of the issues that we need to actually address is when we have these very lavish, over-the-top weddings, it sets a kind of a standard which those who cannot afford to do also have to follow. And I have to tell you that I know of people who've come from the lowest strata of society, in the sense of the lowest economic strata, and what a burden it has become, you know, having the shadi. And more to the point, if you have to give dowry, this is the thing which we, dowry as in not uh, stridhan. And there are, there's a definite difference between the two, which I would like you to read in my book. But dowry as in, you know, something which is asked for, which is demanded, and how demeaning can that be? If that becomes a kind of a burden, we certainly need to have a collective voice against it. That is what I, I raised over there in my book. Thanks, uh, Amita. And Hello, ma'am. I want to ask that the big fat weddings are not increasing the dowry. Can you repeat that question, please? The big fat weddings in, Indian, in, in India are not increasing the system of dowry. Are not reducing the system of dowry? Actually, ma'am, in the... Sorry, sorry. In this rural parts, and the some parts of the Rajasthan, from where I belong, in my society, there's a big fat weddings, you know, just use cars and, and they just increase the people from this, we will give, give that type of money and cars to our daughters, which we, we have, they're not able to do. But may I know what is the question? Uh, I think his question is that they're not being able to do away with the dowry system in the small villages. Yes, I, I, I just, actually had addressed that. Ma'am, I think the dowry system was in Hindustan, in Prachin Bharat, in my Marwad. We have a lot of old things in the time. 40 years ago, a khatiya, a lantern, and a lantern, 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 चार सार फेरे लेते थे और चले जाते थे। लेकिन उस डाउरी को आज आज की जो डाउरी है, that you are giving Mercedes, you are giving Honda। अच्छा, but I have to now clarify over here that देखिए एक तो स्त्रीधन में फर्क है और डाउरी में फर्क है। स्त्रीधन जो है, वो 
महिलाओं का एक नेचुरल अधिकार है इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि हम लोग डाउरी को भी डाउरी तो हटानी चाहिए लेकिन स्त्रीधन को भी हटा दिया जाए इसके बारे में काफ़ी चर्चा करी हमने पुस्तक में और आप लोग पढ़ें उसके बारे में और अपनी टिप्पणियाँ दें तो मैं बहुत आभारी होंगी लेकिन मेरा मैं इस मन से ये भी कहना चाहती हूँ कि ये नहीं सोचना चाहिए कि हम लोग डाउरी हटाएं स्त्रीधन हटाएं और लड़कियों की जब शादी करें उनको कुछ ना दें कॉल इट so do you think the rising uh, westernization will lead to obsolution uh, obsolution in marriages and the big fat indian wedding that we call it or will the culture and the trend continue as now we are at the lowest uh, economy you know like 4.8% so i think uh, what what are your views so, on okay, this okay so now you brought in live in marriages but i have to say that in the indian scriptural sense uh, manu has actually mentioned eight kinds of weddings which also includes the gandharva wedding which is a love marriage right now bringing in live in marriages i don't know whether the live in partnership is probably the right term uh, the statistics tell us otherwise 94 of our youth say they still believe in marriage so let's see what happens Thank you so much. We wish to thank Amita Nigam Sahai, Deva Priya Roy, Mr. Amitabh Kant, and Ma'am Madhur Jaffrey for this very enriching and enlightening session. And we extend our best wishes to Amita Ma'am on her new book. Uh, she's going to be available for further interaction as well as signing books at the book signing desk. It's right in front, right at the entrance of Char Bagh, so that's where she'll be. Also, the book is available for purchase at the JCB Price for Literature bookstore, managed by Full Circle. So do go grab yourself a copy. I the would like to thank uh, Madhur Jaffrey Ji for being here and Amitabh Kant for having. Uh, given me this wonderful start to the book thank you very much and to jlf of course the next session at charbagh is session 118 olympics and the india story it would begin shortly i request the audience to kindly occupy the front rows first and to turn their phones on silent mode thank you <laughs>